Thank you for the introduction. Um, our study uh, was funded by the Dutch Arthritis Society and uh, our s uh, disclosures are on the slide. Um, Handel osteoarthritis is a prevalent disease which is associated with a high disease burden. Clinically, patients suffer from bony swellings in the interphalangeal joints, uh, episodes of soft tissue swelling and erythema, joint deformation, and this all leads to pain and loss of function and loss of grip strength. At this moment, there is an unmet need for effective therapies for Handel osteoarthritis. No disease-modifying drugs are available, and the efficacy of current options for symptom relief are moderate at best. From studies, we know that local inflammation is important in the disease process, as it is often present, and it has been shown that it's a major determinant of pain and radiographic disease progression. Glucocorticoids are drugs that are widely used and potent, have potent anti-inflammatory action. And that is why we performed a a trial in which we wanted to investigate the efficacy and safety of six-week treatment with prednisolone 10 milligrams daily in patients with painful hand osteoarthritis with signs of inflammation. <coughs> we performed a 14-week double-blind placebo-controlled trial to investigate this. In this trial, we included patients with hand osteoarthritis according to the ACR criteria. These patients had to have finger pain of at least 30 millimeters on a 100 millimeter visual analog scale and had to have a flare of pain upon washout of an NSAID. Clinically, there had to be at least one interphalangeal joint with soft tissue swelling or erythema and at least one interphalangeal joint with signs of inflammation on ultrasound defined as a power, positive power Doppler signal and synovial thickening of at least grade two. Important exclusion criteria were the presence of chronic inflam inflammatory rheumatic diseases, psoriasis, the use of immune modulating drugs within 90 days before the baseline visit, and the presence of more thumb-based pain than finger pain. 92 patients were randomized one-to-one -to, -one to two groups, either receiving prednisolone or placebo, and the patients in the prednisolone group received 10 milligrams prednisolone daily for six weeks, followed by a tapering scheme of two weeks. From week eight onwards, both uh, the patients in both groups received no study medication. And the primary endpoint in this study was finger pain on a visual analog scale at week six. Clinical assessments were performed at baseline weeks two, six, and 14. And imaging assessments with ultrasound were performed at baseline week six and week 14. As I said, the primary endpoint was finger pain at week six, and key secondary endpoints are listed on this slide and include the fulfillment of the omar Owasi responder criteria, pain as measured with the OSCEN, function as measured with OSCEN and FIHOA, patient global assessment, quality of life, grip strength, and synovial thickening and power Doppler signal on ultrasound. In total, we screened 149 patients who were randomized uh, into two groups, of whom 42 patients in each group completed the whole study. On this slide, you can see the baseline characteristics of the patients included in the study. The baseline characteristics were well balanced between the groups and represent a typical hand osteoarthritis population with predominantly female um, of women in their 60s who were slightly overweight with a disease duration around seven years with a large proportion of patients with erosive hand osteoarthritis and a mean uh, finger pain of around 54. For the primary endpoint, you can see that patients who received prednisolone had significantly less pain at week six than with placebo with a mean between group difference of around of 16.5 points on the VAS scale. However, after tapering, we saw that the between group differences disappeared. Patients in the prednisolone group were also significantly more often omarac Owasi responder, with 72% responders in the prednisone group versus 33% responders in the placebo group. 
For the secondary outpoints, we saw that patients receiving prednisolone also had significantly greater improvements at week six uh, compared to placebo for all secondary endpoints except for grip strength. Then for the imaging outcomes, we saw that patients on prednisone had significantly more decrease in synovial thickening at week six than with placebo, which again disappeared after tapering. And we also saw no dif uh, significant difference throughout the study in power Doppler signal. Um, these, this is an overview of the adverse events. Overall, there were only mild and non-severe adverse events occurred in the study, and these were balanced between the two groups. So to conclude, in our study, we saw that prednisone was superior to placebo in patients with painful hand osteoarthritis with signs of inflammation. Uh, we saw sub a substantial improvement in pain after six weeks in the group that received prednisone 10 milligrams daily, and also improvement in secondary outpoints, uh, endpoints of both clinical and imaging markers. However, these effects disappeared after tapering. Uh, and all in all, we believe that prednisone may be a new treatment option in hand osteoarthritis, although future studies investigating optimal dosage and treatment duration are warranted. <laughs>